What is up, YouTube? Uh, back in the Grove, not checking up on the plants, but I wanted to cover something that I get asked kind of often, uh, more from new growers, and it's when it comes to picking seeds, uh, feminized versus regular, not necessarily what's the difference, but which one's better, why would you, and a lot of them ask, why would you ever choose regular seeds if you had the option for feminized seeds? Why wouldn't you just always get feminized seeds and never have to worry about milk? And I mean, that's a really good question, right? I mean, it's a question I've asked myself as well in the past. You know, I had to end up doing a bunch of research trying to figure it out on my own. And uh, it's actually why I've recently switched over to regular seeds. I mostly do clones, so seeds aren't really my thing. But just to get into it, so if this is something you've ever been curious about, I know this is more for the newer, you know, people out there. A lot of you other ones already know this. So I mean, same for you, it's for them, right? Just a little bit of education. So to get right into it, let's start with square one. By the way, this is like my fifth take on this. I tried to do this video last night and I was too uh, medicated and it was not happening. So fifth time to lucky charm, right? So to get right into it and start with square one. Uh, first off, what are they? You know, what's the difference, right? So we'll start there. Uh, fem seeds are exactly what they sound like. They're feminized seeds. They're female only seeds. So what I mean by that is they only grow female plants which for most of us, uh, it's what you're looking for, right? It's the one that grows the flower, the buds, right? That is female plants to do that. Male plants grow the pollen sacs. Feminized seeds are meant to just grow females, you know, only plants. Um, it's not a perfect 100% all the time, but it's like 99.99 or something like that. I've never actually had a male, but there is a possibility it one could be a male, uh, just very unlikely. Now, feminized seeds and regular seeds, regular being just nature's gamble, right? 50-50 male-female, you don't know what you're going to get. So to go over some pros and cons of each, and then it'll kind of help you decide what you should pick, because there is, there is pluses and minuses to both, right? You would assume feminized seeds all throughout, right? But, so that's obviously the biggest pro, is feminized seeds always female. What are their cons? Well, if you go to any seed bank or souvenir seed bank, whatever you want to call it, uh, they don't have every genetic, every strain, every cultivar, whatever you want to call it, it's not all available available in fem seeds. They, a lot of them will only be available in regular seeds, and I think that's due to the way feminized seeds are created and, and some of the effects it could have. So what I mean by that is feminized seeds, the way you make it is you take a female plant that's already female and you spray it with something such as like colloidal silver. Uh, which triggers a specific type of stress re response. It is sort of like forcing a plant to go hermy in a way that doesn't have hermaphrodite traits, right? Because that's not something you want in your genetics, you know, tra you know, traits. You don't want to pass that along. That's bad, right? So what they do is they spray it with this something like colloidal silver. There's other things out there as well, either the whole plant or even just a branch, uh, you know, put a bag around it or something, and that will stress out and cause a reaction in that branch or plant causing it to produce, uh, you know, causing within its buds to grow female only seeds. And that's how fem seeds are created. And since it is sort of like a stress induced reaction, you know, you're doing these chemical responses, right? Using the colloidal silver spray, uh, that actually passes into the seeds a little bit. And what I mean is feminized seeds compared to regular seeds have a lower stress resistance. So they're more susceptible to stress than a regular seed due to the way it's being created, right? So, and it's not by any great massive degree, so I'm not trying to dissuade you from doing feminized seeds. I've ran more feminized seeds than I have regular seeds, so they're fantastic. Um, but, you know, it, it increases your likelihood of, you know, they're, they're more easily stressed from heat stress, light stress, drought stress. You may be a little bit more likely or susceptible to having hermaphrodites. Solid genetics should be able to keep most of this at bay. You know, the better the breeder, the less likely any of this is going to happen um, because they really bred in, you know, the positives of the traits, right? And that's why reputable breeders are always good to go by. You know, go with them consistently and that's how they make names for themselves. Obviously, if you're popping fem seeds and getting Hermes all the time, you're going to have a problem, right? Not going to have a good time. So, <clears throat> feminine seeds, their, their big pro is they're pretty much always female. Their biggest negative is that they or the biggest negatives, multiple, is they don't have all genetics are available in females, so you have more of a limited selection, which is unfortunate. They have a little bit lower stress tolerance, which means they're more likely to have issues 
you know, due to environmental factors or anything else, and hermaphroditing is a little bit more uh, likely to happen. And I say little and slightly because these aren't, it isn't a great increase in stress reduction. It's just by a little bit, but it's there. So, you know, keep that, you know, in mind. Um, also, feminine seeds tend to be more expensive. Not always, but if you look through a lot of them, they tend to charge more. Obviously, you're paying for that convenience. So, on the other hand, regular seeds, obviously, their biggest con is a 50-50 gamble of what you get. And if you're budget growing and you bought, you know, $300, 10 seeds or whatever you paid, and that's all you have, you now don't know what all 10 are going to be. You could have seven females, three males. You could have five and five. You can have only three females and seven males. And if you're budget growing, you may want to just go with the fem, you know, the fem seeds because maybe you can't take the risk of it being a 50-50. Obviously, that's its, you know, its biggest downfall. And its positives, its pros, are pretty much the opposite of fem seeds. You have a larger selection because pretty much everything comes in a regular seed. I've never really seen it where there's only a fem version and not a regular version, but I've definitely seen where there's a regular version and not a fem version, if you know what I mean. So, and then obviously it has that higher stress resilience, um, you know, which passes along, you know, it allows you to do better in your growth factors are not 100% perfect, right? Um, which is why I am more recently running some regular seeds, actually the wild berry uh, bites that I have, um, two of them behind me, actually directly behind me, is, uh, we're regular seeds. I got lucky and they all popped him. I just lucky, I guess. But, um, you know, in the higher stress resilience, and I can account for that. Um, one of them is the one that had root rot and it bounced back wick. So they do, it is notable, like I said, um, you don't notice it so much the other way because as long as your factors, you know, as long as you're not putting undue stress on them, it really is irrelevant. But in those cases where the grow doesn't go right, that little bit of extra stress tolerance can be beneficial. So once again, they both have their ups, they both have their downs. Um, I've personally gone all femme for the longest time, up until recently regular, but I'm not a huge seed uh, junkie. I'm more of clones, either off my previous genetics, or, that was my pump just clicked on, or uh, I get you know clones from reputable sources, breeders, cultivators, usually that I know someone uh, employed there, um, so that way I can be guaranteed there's no hot plate virus or anything like that. Which you can get in seeds as well, can pass along. I don't think it passes along as easily. Once again, is why you want reputable breeders. But that's it though. So if you've ever been wondering and you, or you've thought what one's better than the other, it really just depends, right? My answer to everything seems to be it just depends, right? Depends on what you're looking for, what's your budget, you know, does it even offer in fam, all those things, a little bit of stress resilience. If you got the room to pop them and see what you get, because obviously, if you pop a button, you know, 10 and say only one was female out of a regular seed, you can always get a big and clone it and have a bunch, right? You know, that's all that matters, but it makes pheno hunting a little hard if you only have one, right? But there it is, there's a nutshell. That's all the pluses and the minuses. If there's any out there that I don't know about that I have not listed, actually, please list it below. Let me know. I am genuinely interested in learning. So if you know something I don't, educate me, man. I'm open for it. Other than that, I'll go ahead and end it here. Peace out, YouTube, and as always, have a good guys. The rest of my life, see, I'm in love with Mary Jane. I'm gonna make her wife, yeah, yeah.